Welcome to Shields Live. Happy Thursday. So we're on Thursdays this now. So um, Tim is going to not going to be here today. He has taken his family to the fair today. So they're out at the state fair. Today's the first day of the state fair here in Iowa. For those of you who are away from here. So that's where he is today. And uh, it's a nice day, I think, to be out of the fair. It's not raining and it's not like super duper hot. So usually it's either pouring down rain for the state fair it's super duper hot or both. So that <laughs> that's usually the state fair here in Iowa. So it's in August, it's like right before school starts. So, but anyway, so how is everybody today? So you're just gonna have me today and we're going to have a little fun, a little summer fun. I just wanted to do some fun embroidery projects. So we're gonna, we're gonna embroider our, the little, this is a little ironing mat. So I made this actually in another class, and I'll show you how I actually made this sometime. Um, this is going to be this. We actually made this in Design Center. We actually created this pattern in the Design Center, and then I just made it a PES file. So the file, the free file, is in um, the description of this video. Okay, so there's a link to the to the free file. I'll make sure it's there. And then for those of you who are listening on YouTube later, there will be a file um, there as well in the description right below the video. So if you just kind of click below the video, there's a little description area and then the link to this free file will be there. Of course, you will not get the Disney character. So the file that I'm giving you is actually, there's a, a, a two halves to this, to this um, little hoop pad. And then I did a full one. So depending on if you want a design on it or not, you would use the split one if you want the design. And if you want just fabric, you know, if you have like sewing fabric or some cute fabric, you can just do it all in one piece. So I'll show you that when we I get the design on the on the screen here. So okay. So just a second here. I'm going to turn off the banner. Hopefully. There we go. See if the comments will come through. Is anybody commenting? Oh, there we go. People are coming through now. Sorry, I I haven't been able to um there's been a lot of weird little quirks on everybody's, I've been watching some classes that I often watch on Thursdays. There's some digitizing classes and stuff and everybody's been having quirky problems today. So hopefully everything's okay for you guys. Okay. So hello. Hi, Jerry. So anyway, we're going to make this little hoop mat. Now what's nice about these little mats is what I do with them is there's ironing board fabric on the one side. And what I do then is if I need to, if I've cut out my applique pieces, you know, we've been talking about last month, we talked about cutting fabric for applique and so on. And so, so often I need something that I can iron and then I don't have to take my hoop out of the machine. So I can just, I can just lay this little mat up in there. Um, most of the time, this one's big enough. This one fits in a six by 10 hoop. Um, you could make it bigger if you wanted to. You could just enlarge it and make it big and bigger if you have like larger designs you're doing. Um, but I made this one um, just kind of an average, kind of medium size, and it works for most everything I do. But then it just slides in. So I put the ironing board fabric against the bottom of my hoop and just slide it in like this. I can press on it and then I pull it out. And the trick is remember to pull it out <laughs> before you start embroidering again. Ask me how I know about that. I sewed a couple of them onto the bottom of my hoop. Whoops. Um, so anyway, this this was a fun little project. And I like Disney. So I, I'm, we're going to use a little Disney character today. We're going to use a little Mickey Mouse. There's also a little mini that matches this. So I might make the second. I've got a second one here. I might make it in make mini mouses and have two of them. So, so these are the little hoop pads. Okay. So let me change my calendar or my uh, camera over here. And keep this over here and then we'll talk about what we need for fabrics. All right, let me see here. Got to get to the right buttons. All right. Okay. So I'm going to be over here at this and I'm actually using um I'm using the Brother Stellaire um because I needed a Disney machine because, you know, the Disney characters, you can get them from iBroidery, of course, but I, I didn't have this particular little design. I think this little design that I made this original one, um, at the time I had my old 1500D 
<laughs> uh, embroidery sewing machine here. And I think it was in that one that I picked this little design. So um, there's a very similar one in the Stellaire. So we're gonna be using that today. And what you need to cut for this is the front fabric is, I just picked this red polka dot, okay? And it's um, six and a half by nine and a half. So just a piece of fabric, of cotton fabric. And it'd be best to use cotton fabric, you know, 100% cotton fabrics. Um, then I like fusible batting. So this is 100% cotton fusible batting. So it does have like a little fusible on it. And I fused this already onto my fab, the back of my main fabric here. So this is fusible batting fused onto my, um, onto my top fabric. Now you don't have to have the fusible batting, but it's nice because it just keeps everything together. So if you don't have fusible batting, you can just use regular cotton batting, but it's best to have cotton batting. Okay. Because this is going to be used for something for heat. So you want to use cotton if you can. Um, we are going to have some polyester things in here, of course, but the heat, most of the heat is going to be on this side here. So um, it's going to be fine. It's not going to damage anything. I just try to use cotton um, fabrics and stuff when I'm doing um, things that are going to be used with an iron. So, okay. So then we're going to get, need some insel bright. So that insel bright is that stuff that you would put like in hot pads. So this is a piece of insel bright. So we're going to put this in um, a piece of that. And these are all six and a half by nine and a half, all of these pieces that I'm showing you. And then I've got a piece of the little silver ironing board fabric. Okay. So that's just, just the plain ironing board fabric that I got it um, in the utility area, like from, um, at Joann's, I think is where I got that. And then Insel Bright, I think I got there too. It's probably in the same area, actually. And then maybe, maybe with the, it might be with the stabilizers. And then this, um, I got my cotton batting adhered to the back of my front fabric. Okay, so I got all of those. And then we're going to need some fat, some threads, of course. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put the little um, design on besides, you know, I'm going to make the little pad, put the little design on. So um, I picked out the threads that I needed for my little Mickey um, design that we're going to use. And I warn you, I have not done one of these for a while. So we'll, we'll see what happens today. <laughs> but it does fit in a 6 by 10 hoop. So I have it in my 6, I have my six by 10 hoop here. And in my 6 by 10 hoop then, I have hooped. And you want to make sure... Oh, hi, Leslie. Yeah, this is a really fun little project. It really is. You'll you'll get a kick out of these. And they work really well. So what I do with it, let me, before I tell you about the stabilizer, let me show you. Like what I do when I'm ironing them. Whoops. Wiggle the camera for you. What I do when I, when I use this is I just kind of pull my hoop up and I slide it under here like this. So then I can use my little iron in here to iron. And I'm ironing on the, the silver side, which is like the... Um, is like the the part for the um the ironing board fabric okay so that's what i'm going to iron on but i thought it turned out cute it was a real fun little project to make so all right so i have my six by ten hoop in my machine here and i um hooped a piece of wet this is the sew and wash from dime so in other words it's like the fibrous wash away stabilizer and then um uh, or wet and gone from Floriani, whichever which one, whichever one you have. I happen to have the dime here, and I've got it in there. Now, the one thing you do want to do with this, especially on this project, is you want to make sure that it's pretty taut in the hoop, and then tighten it down really well so that um, you have a good taut surface to be working on. Okay, because we're going to be doing a lot of trimming and stuff today, and there's quite a lot of layers, so you want to make sure that your stabilizer is taut when you're when you're working on it so give it a little tug it, it'll take a little tug um, and make sure it's good and taut i don't pull you know like on my fabrics and stuff but this stabilizer you do want it to be taut in your in your hoop okay so the first thing we're going to do is grab our design so let me show you then what i gave you in that that folder for the designs here i've got them on my stick so i'm going to go to embroidery and i'm going to go to my stick Hopefully my stick's okay. I, my stick has been a little touchy, so hopefully it works okay today. All right, so here's my Mickey hoop pad. And it is, there are three files. 
that are in your um, download plus these little instructions. So the instructions are kind of sketchy, but I think you'll understand. They're pretty easy. Okay, so this is the instructions. And um, but if you are going to use a design, I'm, I split the two pieces of the um, hoop pad, excuse me, up so that I could sew the first half, then add the um, design and then do the second half. Okay. If you don't plan on putting the little design in, you can just use this hoop pad full design because it'll just do the fabric and then then you don't you don't you can don't have to worry about putting your design in. I just split this up so that it was a little easier for you to get your your embroidery design in the right place so you didn't have to like skip forward or backwards to get to get the thing sewn. So I I split that in half for you. So I'll show you how we're going to use it because I am going to do the little Mickey this time. Okay, so I'm going to choose hoop pad A. Okay, and then I'm going to set that. And again, this fits in the six by 10 hoop. But at this point, I would like to put my little design in the corner of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the add button down here. And I'm going to go to my Mickey Mouse. And I think this one was a classic Mickey. So classic Mickey is here. And you can put any design in here or no design. I just like Mickey. So I'm going to put Mickey in. So here's Mickey and here's Minnie. And I think I'll put Minnie on. The, I've got another piece of fabric. I thought I'd do Minnie also. So here's Mickey. So let's pick Mickey. Okay. And we're going to hit set on Mickey. Now Mickey's going to come up in the middle of our hoop pad. But I really don't want him in the middle. I'd like him kind of down on the corner. Now, this one faces to the right or to the left, excuse me. He's in the right corner and faces to the left. This one is going to face the other direction because this was in a different machine. <laughs> so, and the one thing about the Disney characters in the brother machines, um, you cannot do much uh, editing with them. You can move them. You can rotate them but you cannot mirror them. So in this case, I'm, I've got Mickey chosen here. I'm going to hit edit up here. And you can see that size is grayed out. Mirror is grayed out. Density is grayed out. You know, all of that's grayed out. So I can't do any of those things with the Disney characters, but I can move him and I can rotate him. So I'm going to rotate him 90 degrees so that he's facing in towards my hoop pad. And then I'm just going to move him with the little moving buttons down to this corner. So it's going to be in the opposite corner of my original one, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to put him in this little corner here. Somewhere you think he looks nice. And I picked this one too because it didn't take too long to stitch out. So, so we're going to put Mickey about right there. He looks nice there. So we'll put him right there. Okay, and we're going to hit OK. So that way we it's going to do the hoop pad first Part, and then it's going to let us do the Mickey. And then we're going to choose the B pattern to come in and finish it off. Okay. And it explains that in the instructions. Okay. So I'm going to hit embroidery now. And I got my little Mickey down there. Okay. So now it says to, um, I hoop the wet and gone. Again, make sure it's taut. And then it says the placement line is number one. It's the first step is number one. Placed, and then we're going to place our fabric with the fused batting over the line. So let's talk a little bit about thread, first of all. Now, I am going to use um, bobbin thread in the bobbin until, oh, I forgot to, to, to wind a bobbin, too. I may have to do that. See if I can find a bobbin here to wind. I forgot to wind my black bobbin thread. Just a second. You grab that. I, um, I need to have some black bobbin thread for the end, so or some black embroidery thread here. So we'll get this up here ready to go. So when we get to sewing, I can be winding the bobbin here. Sorry about that, guys. I always forget something, you know, when I'm getting ready. Okay, so let's get this. Okay, we'll do that in a second. <clears throat> okay, so the, I'm gonna, I put some brother embroidery bobbin thread in my um, bobbin here. Normally, I use pre-wound bobbins, so I'm just going to explain this, but the reason I'm not using the pre-wound today is because I have to put the black embroidery thread in the bobbin to go around the outside edge of this because I'd like it to match on both sides, see? Okay, so 
I don't want to have to change my bobbin case. So this is the deal. If you're using pre-wound bobbins, you really need to be changing your bobbin case out. So this bobbin case kind of has a blue dot in the center. Some of them will have kind of a pink or reddish bot dot, depending on the bobbin case. This needs to be in the machine when you're using your pre-wound bobbin, okay? So in this case, since I also need to use a bobbin that I'm winding myself, I chose to wind my own embroidery bobbin thread. And this is the brother bobbin thread here. I wound this on a bobbin instead. So I don't have to change out the bobbin cases. So when you wind your own embroidery bobbin thread and like embroidery thread that I'm going to put in the bobbin later, you use the standard bobbin case that comes in the machine. It's kind of got a kind of a greenish colored screw right here. Okay, I don't have that one out. It's in the machine right now. So I chose to wind a bobbin for this project so that I don't have to switch the bobbin cases out in the middle. So that's how I've changed how I've changed how I'm doing my embroidery is that if I, I have some of this bobbin thread around and if I'm doing a project that I know I'm going to be have to change the bobbin case in the middle of it, I like to wind a bobbin of the regular bobbin thread, use it so I don't have to change the bobbin case too. So I'm just trying to work around to make it easier for me. Okay, so we won't be using this one today. But if I'm just embroidering and I know I don't have to change the bobbin cases, I use my pre-wound and just put the other bobbin case in. Okay, so now we are going to do a placement line. So the first, I'm going to start my bobbin here and let it wind. Should it should go off here in a minute. And by the way, did you know that you have two these like this machine has two motors on it and so you can wind bobbins and sew at the same time isn't that awesome so we can do that so we're just gonna let that wind it'll stop i've got red thread in my needle and i've got my bobbin thread in my bobbin so we're going to start with that going to hit go and this is going to be our placement line for our first piece of fabric so we're going to place the front fabric with the fused batting over this line. This was a really fun project. Everybody wanted little a little ironing pad. And I think what I did is I saw one from another company. They did it kind of like raw edge applique or something. And it was really cute, but it was kind of raveling or something on the edge. And I, and I decided I wanted it to be satin stitched on the edge. So... Okay, so you'll notice that this one is doing a second line. It's doing a line and then going back over it. This is was digitized, just so you know, in the machine in Design Center. And I can't tell it not to do that. It just does a double line whether I tell it to or not. So that's why it's going twice. You don't need it to go twice, so that's why it does. So yours will too, even though it's a PES file now. Okay. So then we're going to lay this down. And again, all I have in here is my, my wet and gone stabilizer, my sew and wash. I have sew and wash because it's dime. Okay, so I'm going to lay this in here. And then the second step is going to be the tack down for the fabric. So we're going to do our tack down. And I think this might go over twice too. Actually, I think I should have changed my needle. I don't think I have any needles back there, though. We may have to get try to get by. Sometimes you can hear a funny noise when the needle, if the needle needs to be changed. And I don't think I have any needles back there. Let me see. I might if I have one. Doesn't sound too bad. It looks like it's sewing okay, so we should be all right. I think I do. I'll grab a needle out here in case I need to change it. Okay. Sometimes you just have to have to have them on, you know, on uh, on reserve. But I don't have my screwdriver. <laughs> I have to get my screwdriver out. Okay. All right. So then it says in the instructions to we did the tack down which was number two and then it says to trim close to the stitches so we're going to go ahead and we're going to trim close to the stitches now i like to use these double curved um, embroidery scissors oh, hopefully it'll 
clear off. Sometimes when I get things too close, it likes to, there we go. So I'm going to use these and I'm going to trim this pretty close. Now the thing with these, try not to trim through your, your, your threads, but with this and with the bulk, you do want to be pretty close. So I am, I am tipping my scissor so that it is going to be pretty close and I'm lifting up a little bit so that I can get pretty close to those stitches. Don't, don't cut through your stabilizer either. Because there's going to be quite a little bit of bulk on this, but it works good. Okay, so we're going to go all the way around. Whoops, these are a little hard to get moved in the machine here. This hoop isn't as big as some of them are. But this one has, yeah, it has to be in this hoop. I, I couldn't remember if I made it just small enough to go in a 5 by 7 but this one has to go in a 6 by 10 All right, so we're going to go around the corners. And again, if you don't want to put the little decorative, um, the little um, embroidery design on it, you don't have to. A lot of people made them with just really cute, you know, cute decorative fabrics. So you can just do do that also. But we're going to quilt it. So it's going to trim all of this. Let's see if I can get it in here so you can see me trimming. I'm go around here. Like that. Okay, so then we got our little top all trimmed. Put this back in the machine. And then it says to do step number three, which is the quilting. Now I had my quilting done in red on mine. So I'm just going to leave my red thread, you know, so I just started with the red. And now I can put the red thread in. And now it's going to do the quilting design. So again, this was digitized in Design Center. I actually made this little pattern right in the Design Center program of the machine and um, converted it to a PES file so everybody could read it. So now it's going to do this little diamond pattern. And I've got to get all my other little pieces going here. I can get a little bit closer for you. My camera's a little wonky today for some reason. There we go. It's going to do the little quilting design. I think I'm sewing it at about 800. I usually sew somewhere around 800 on most of the machines. And my machine and my bobbin finished winding, by the way, so it stopped. But we're going to be working on both sides of the hoop today, so um, we will be using. The second, I gotta get this to go away here. Stuff is in the middle of my comments. I can't see. Looks like I got some threads all over here. But these were really fun to do. So, so they are going to be fairly thick when we get the other piece on. So um, you do have to do some um, creative trimming, I call it, because you have to get pretty. You have to get through two layers on the back. So once we get there, you'll understand. It's not hard, but you do have to take your time to do the trimming. It takes about 17 minutes to do this um, in stitching because of the little design I put on, and then. The other half, the other part takes a little bit because you have to do the satin stitching. So. so it'll take us a few minutes to do this, but it's fun to watch. I like the quilting. This was just, this is just in Design Center. It's just that little crosshatch quilting. So it's in the Design Center program. We just used the simple one. And then we did a decorative edging. So we'll do the cute little decorative edging too. I'll have to check and see. I think I'm at 800. Seems like it's going kind of slow. I'll have to check it. Make sure I didn't go down to six to 600. Might just be the pattern. Well, I I digitized this oh several years ago, and I have not ever sewn it for anybody we we talked about how to make the pro the design and i showed people the sewing um the, the sewn out sample but i never actually sewed it on a video so i thought well this would be fun 
so you can actually see it made. So when this stops, I'll check my speed. I thought it was at 800, but I don't normally sew on this machine, so I didn't see where it was. I didn't look to see where it was set. Makes a nice, um, like almost like a triple stitch for the decorative stitch, which is nice and makes it ni nice and crisp on the um, on the fabric. So you can see it nicely. Hi, everybody. People are still saying hi. Hi, everybody. It looks nice. I really like this um, fusible batting. This is actually some dream cotton fusible batting that Judy and I have. Um, I use it quite often because it's nice because it's fusible because and then it gives, you know, some body to the fabric too because it's attached to the to the fabric. Um, you wouldn't you wouldn't have to if you if you are using just regular batting, I'd probably tell you to, to do some uh, when you did the first outline, you might want to put a little tape around the outside edge just to keep everything, you know, in place and not screwed on you. But since this one was fused, I didn't have to do that. But now I'll have an extra one of these so I can leave it here at the store. So I'll have it here. I'm always looking for my little, I reach under my like um, computer table here because I have the same computer table at home that I use when I teach. And I, I, I put my hand under there and it's like, oh shoot, I don't have my little, my little pad because I always keep this there. So when I need it, I just grab under my table and stick it under my hoop. So now I'll have one here too. And we'll, I'll make one with uh, Minnie, Minnie Mouse too. Getting just about done. Getting over to the last little side here. That's really gonna look nice. I thought I, I thought I checked the speed. We'll check. This takes the longest, and then the other part that takes a little while is the little decorative edging. So you can just watch the machine run. You know, I can't really speed up. I can't speed it up. So, you know, it's nice to do it in, in real time. So, all right, I'm just, just going to check my speed. Yeah, I'm at 800, so we should be good. All right. So now I'm going to do the next step. This is step number four is going to be the decorative outline. Yep, the decorative outline. So we're going to do that next. And I did that in gold. So this, these are brother colors. So I used my, um, what's it called, 900 red. And then this is my deep gold. And it is number 214, deep gold. So we're going to put that one on. Oops. And do the little decorative edging. And then we'll do Mickey. I use the Disney stuff quite often for things like this, just because I think they're cute. I like Disney stuff. But then this is just going to do our little decorative stitch. It's going to go all the way around the outside edge. It's like a little um, candle wick. That's what they call it, candle wicking. So it's like a little bubble, like a little, let's see here. That's what it's doing. So we'll do that. That's why it's nice to do these in real time, because then you can see how long, about how long it actually takes. Get some of these little strings out of the way here. I thought it looked nice with the gold around it. Let me see, where's my fabric? So it'll go all the way around the outside edge. So does anybody have questions so far about what I've done? I know a few of you came in later. Do you have questions about how we got started or the sizes of the fabrics? What fabrics I'm using? I had quite a few people come in kind of after we went through the fabrics. Maybe we'll do that while this is stitching. We went through, um, so I had front fabric again. I had my front fabric and it's six and a half by nine and a half. And then I have a piece of fusible batting. 
attached to the back of that. That's also six and a half by nine and a half. And then I had my insel bright. I have a piece of insel bright. Okay, that's six and a half by nine and a half. And then I have a piece of the ironing board, you know, the silver ironing board fabric. That's six and a half by nine and a half. And this is all in the instructions that there's a link in the video here on Facebook to it. I will make sure it's there. And then if you're watching on YouTube later, it will be in the description below the um, below the video. So there's a description area right below the video. If you sometimes you have to click the word see more and then the, the link will be there to take you right to where the free design is. but you will have um, three designs in there. The three designs, there's an A and a B design. If you're gonna add your your little um, you know, embroidery pattern on it, like I'm going to. And then there's a, also a full design so that if you're just gonna use fabric, you can just use that if you're just gonna use fabric. So that's what's in, and then the instructions are in there for you. This is looking cute. It takes a little bit to go around. I think it said 17 minutes, but the last part doesn't take as long, but you do have to go all the way around the outside edge with the satin stitch. So we'll be here for a little bit together. Takes about an hour, I would guess, to make the whole thing. Like I said, I haven't made one of these for a while, so it was kind of fun. I thought, I'm just not gonna make one. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna come on here with my friends <laughs> and make this together. And we'll just see how it ha what happens. I haven't sewed on this machine much. This is the Stellaire XJ one. Um, the XJ one is the sewing and embroidery machine. And uh, I haven't sewn on this very much. It's a nice machine. It's very much like the Dream Machine. Kind of like the replacement for the Dream Machine. Same size and the big, the size of the hoops and everything. And a really nice embroidery machine. I like that it has a nine and a half by 14 hoop. This one we didn't need that big, but that was okay. But this this is a good machine, but it is a Disney machine. So I was trying to find one of the machines that had a similar little Mickey in it. And I almost had to bring my old machine in because I knew that's the one I used when I did this. Um, Judy, Judy has her older machine here, and I almost, I could have used that because it has the same design in it. But it was, uh, she has an old 4500V 4, that she keeps here, so it's an older machine. It still sells well. So we're getting around. And then we'll do Mickey. So I'm not sure what color Mickey starts with. I think he starts with white. I'll get my white thread ready here. I'm glad I still had some polka dot fabric left. I'm kind of going through some of my um, like scrap fabrics because I've got a lot of scraps and I kind of purge my scrap fabrics every now and then. And so I need to go finish going through and purge out a few more so I can um, clean out my drawers. <laughs> and so my fabric drawers. So this was, there was just enough left to make a couple of these. All right around this little decorative stitch takes a little while but it's so cute i just really like that that's one of one of my favorite ones and again that one's in the design center part of the machine so that's where we got it from and when these are in the machines like when you when you create these in um design center the machine creates a file either, there's two different kinds of files it produces. It produces either a PHC or a PHX, depending on the machine that you have. This produces a PHX actually now. And so when I took this out of the machine then, I converted it in my P design software so that it could be a PES. That way everybody could sell it. Okay, so this is going to be, yeah, so this is his face. So Mickey, the classic Mickey faces were white. Um, the newer Mickey 
designs that are in the machine, the faces are kind of a linen color. So they're a little bit more on the tan, not tan, but more of a creamy color. But the old classic Mickeys were white. So this one's going to be white. And then, let's see, I'm not sure. I think I, then I think it does his little tongue. So I think that's pink. I think it's salmon pink. So here's his face. He's a pretty small Mickey. I didn't have as big a one in this machine. So he's only about, um, I think he was about a one and a half inches square. Roughly. Hi, Judy. So people are still coming in. Hello, everybody. So if you have questions about what the fabrics are and stuff, if you come in late, make sure you, you ask me. But all of the um, the design and all of the instructions, the three parts of the design and the instructions will be in, you know, with the video on Facebook, on the Shields Sewing uh, Facebook page. And it will also be in the description on YouTube below the video. So then you'll know you'll have all the information you need to get the, the free design. So it's going over his little face here. And then I think it does this, yeah, it does his little tongue next. So we'll get our pink ready. Some of these older designs from, from um, the older ones that were in the machine um, are actually kind of sparse. So you'll notice that some of them look a little funny when they sew out. They're a little on the sparse side because some of these designs have been in the machine for many, many years. And like this one, probably has been in the machine for 20 years. So, you know, things have changed a lot in the digitizing world in that 20 years. So some of these designs haven't been, I don't think have been redigitized. So if you notice they look a little sparse or something, it's just because they're older designs. So the next color is the pink. And this was salmon pink. I think it's 079. And it's going to do his little mouth. And then I think it's just, yeah, then it's the black. Where did I put my, oh, here's my black. The black's up there on the machine. So there's his mouth. And now we're going to do the rest of his little ears and everything. And that's done in the black. And I'm just using the bobbin thread, my regular brother bobbin thread in the bobbin here for the, all of this. And none of this is going to show because it's going to be, you know, under in the middle of the, the little ironing pads. So, all right. And off we go for his ears. We're going to do his ears and his little nose and eyeballs and all that. So now we're going to actually get to see Mickey now. He'll look more like Mickey now with his ears on. I do actually really like, I almost put Winnie the Pooh on here because I have some Pooh, I have Pooh designs in here too. Thanks, Leslie. I'm glad you liked the videos. So here's the, doing his little ears. He's not a very big design, it's small. And there's a lot of fills in this, so it'll take a few minutes, but. You know, it's funny, I've had an embroidery machine for many years and I, I still just love to sit and watch it sew. <laughs> it's so funny, I just still sit and watch it sew, even though I've, had a machine and do you guys do that too i just sit and watch it i still find it fascinating to watch the designs come to life you know as you as you watch them you know finish up and and the ones that are really cool to watch so are the photo stitches because they kind of sew in layers and you, you don't have any idea what it's going to look like until it's completely done i mean otherwise you'd think oh it that is so ugly. <laughs> you do that too. Yeah, I, I love to just sit and watch the machine. So I find it very relaxing. All right, so there's his ears. He's got ears. So hopefully now he's, he'll get a nose and some eyeballs. We need some eyeballs too so we can see. So it's doing the outlines. But yeah, so they have like two sections, you know, in the in the Mickey. So like Mickey and Friends and 
they have the newer ones and then they have these classic ones that are like from the 40s so 30s and 40s oh he's got a mouth now he looks so much he, now he can talk and he's got i think he's only got one eyeball yet though hopefully he'll they'll do his other eye here there we go now they're going to do his other eye, so the machine will do his other eye so we can, can see. Oh, yes. Well, you know, that is true. Because if you turn your head, Judy, if you turn your head, it is like, you know, Murphy's Law that something happens. Yep. I, I don't leave my machine much. I, I'm kind of right there most of the time my bigger machine you know my luminaire it, it is usually pretty self-sufficient but i don't i don't get too far away okay so i think it has to do the little disney logo and then it's done and then we'll go on to the next part all right so there's our mickey so we got the first the top half all done Okay, so it's going to sing and tell us that we're done, but we're not done. Do not take this out of the hoop. Okay, leave it in the hoop. So there's our Mickey and we've got all of our decorative stuff done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back over here and I'm going to hit the little home button. And the other thing that's cool about these machines is that when you bring everything in, it brings everything in centered. Okay. And I'm going to go hit the little Mickey hoop pad again. And now we're going to go back and get B, the hoop pad B, because we, we already did our decorative things. And this is just the two lines that are left, because all we need to do now is to put our backing on and to then do the satin stitch over the bottom. OK, all right. So I'm going to hit set. And again, it comes in, in centered. We know everything's all in the right place. OK, so I'll hit embroidery. All right, so then it says, place the Inselbright and ironing board fabric on the bottom of the hoop, tape in place, right side showing. So we're gonna turn this over. Don't take this out, leave it in the hoop. And we're gonna turn this over. And I might take my scissors, and if you got any little strings hanging out over here, you might just trim them off. So then they won't show you know, through your backing or anything or in the stitching I always there's usually some little tie offs you know so I'll just trim those off okay the rest of this will be all be inside then I'm going to grab my insel bright and I'm going to lay my insel bright in here oops I'm going to lay my insel bright in here on top okay and then I'm going to lay my Invert my uh, ironing board fabric, and I want to see the silver. Okay, I want to see the silver, so I'm going to just lay this in here. I got to get, and I'm going to get my Kimberbell paper tape, and we're going to tape this down. So it is important that you tape this down because it is kind of thick. All right, so I'm just going to tape on the edge, and I'm going to make sure it's well taped down. So we'll tape on all four edges. up here i often use um fabric glue stick when i put things on the back but this was so thick this just didn't work very well with that so i have always taped these thicker items okay so we're gonna oops i missed there there we go so we're gonna tape all four sides and if you get a little bit of you know if you get a little bit in the stitching it's okay we'll be able to pull this tape tape pulls out pretty easily so i just don't want it to go anywhere okay so then i'm going to flip this over carefully on my machine and i'm just going to press down on the edges so that that tape is good and adhered on the back like that okay so now we got our two pieces on the back so i'm going to put this back in the machine and then i always kind of look underneath Oops, and, but I forgot to do one thing. I'm going to go ahead, since we're working under here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually um, do, there's going to be a tack down stitch first. But what I'm going to do is let's go ahead before we put this back in. We're going to go ahead and change our bobbin thread so we don't have to stop after the next step. 
So we will because we're going to do some trimming, but I'm just going to go ahead and put my my uh, black um, embroidery. I, this is gonna not bobbin thread. This is actually embroidery thread because we want it to be strong around the outside edge. So I want my matching black thread in my bobbin. So let's just do that now. You can do it after, after, but this is a little easier to see when you're trimming than the white bobbin thread. So we're just gonna put it in now. And I'm just gonna press this down, make sure it's good and pressed down. All right, so the next step then is going to be the backing tack down step. So we're gonna go ahead and it's gonna go up and it's going to tack down my backing. All the way around the outside edge. I'm just going to watch to make sure nothing gets caught. I'm just kind of watching it. Everything looks pretty good. So this is working on both sides of the hoop. And then it's going to go back over it again. This is fun. Yeah, these are really fun little, I love little in the hoop projects and you can do so many things. I mean, some of the, the in the hoop projects that I've done, it's amazing how people think to be able to do these things. Like I did one um, with Kimberbell once that it's like they actually lined the whole thing in the hoop in one hooping. It was, I, I mean, the first time I did it, it was amazing. I was just amazed. <laughs> okay, so we got that tacked down. Now we're gonna take this back out again. Don't take it out of the hoop. We're just going to turn it over. And now we need to trim on the back. Okay, so we're going to trim close to the stitches on the back because we don't want all this stuff showing. Just a second here. I can't get this up. There we go. I'll put my tape up here. I might be able to use it again later. Okay, whoops, we got, got some in the seam that time, didn't we? I thought I might over here. So we can just pull it out. It'll be, be fine. This comes out of the stitching pretty easily. There we go. And then we're gonna pull this one off. And I would like to trim any of these little, again, these little strings, kind of trim them so that they won't get stuck in your, you know, they won't be poking out of your stitching. So then we're gonna do the same thing on the back. We're gonna trim this close to the stitches. But what I like to do with this, since there's two layers, I like to do one layer at a time because otherwise, it's hard to know where you're at. And if you give me a second, since there's black on here, I'm gonna stick my glasses on. And I like to do one layer at a time because then it's easier to get it close. You know, the top layer is real thin, but the bottom layer is kind of thick with the insulate. So we're gonna trim that. Oop, here we go. Try not to cut through your stitches. And of course, this could be digitized. We could have digitized this in the software too. In fact, I did just to show the differences, you know, in it. But we did this in Design Center. This was like a Design Center pattern one time that we did that was fun. And we'll, we'll do that sometime. We'll actually produce this sometime. Because that's one of the other things I haven't done yet is this little class. This was fun to do this one. I like to do stuff in Design Center because a lot of the machines have it now. So some of the older ones and, and some of the new ones. Okay, so there's that one. And then we're going to go back and we're going to get this insulate. bright. So the insulate bright's kind of hard to cut. So just be careful and don't cut through your stabilizer. I'm kind of tipping the scissors so that I don't cut my stabilizer. It's hard to cut with a camera because it gets in my way. <laughs> All right. So you do want to be fairly close. All right. and be careful not to press down too hard because we don't want to, you know, loosen up our stabilizer or anything. So I'm trying to not press down too hard on this. Yeah. Oops. 
kind of have a little spot there I need to trim a little closer. There we go. Yeah, this stuff's kind of thick. So you do want to, you know, try to keep it pretty close because it shows otherwise. I know I made quite a few of these before I was satisfied with how I did the digitizing part. <laughs> so this, this one should turn out okay, but I, I haven't made one for a while. So we're having an adventure today together. All right, whoops. I think I need to come back this way again for a second. You may not be able to see me for a second. I got to get this trim so I can get around the whole corner here. Okay. Getting around the corner. Takes a minute to do this part. But yeah, if you got if you got sewing friends, these are handy little handy dandy little things to have around. So all right so there we go so now there's the bottom so it's all trimmed okay now i'm going to turn it back over again still got that black embroidery thread in the bobbin and in my needle and now we're going to put this back on here and the last step is going to be the satin stitching around the outside edge so with any luck at all we didn't move anything so we'll know here in a minute won't we so it's going to do this big wide satin stitch and i remember when i did did this i had to come up with a way um in design center it doesn't do like an underlay so you have to make you can change the density though of the satin stitching but i also needed to bring the satin stitching in a little bit so i had to like reduce it just a little so that it would come in on the fabric so that it would hold everything nicely together. So I remember it was a little bit of a, you know, I, I did quite a few little samples to figure out how to do this. So it should sew okay. I know I sewed this out a bunch of times while I was doing the class. All right, so it's going to do the satin stitch. So what do you think, everybody? You think this is going to be a cute little project? Be nice little gifts for people. You could put all kinds of little things, you know, on it. And then you're going to be ironing, of course, on the silver side. So I, you could put anything. You could put a great big design on it if you wanted to, and such. So, and then this is the side you'll be ironing on. Looks pretty good. Looks like I didn't move anything. Sometimes I get a little carried away, and I, I push too hard on my hoop so just be careful when you're trimming it's looking pretty good but I kind of wanted mine the, the ones that I originally saw were like um, raw edge applique on and so it was all raw edge on the edge it was really really cute I think they had to do like maybe like pinking shears around the outside edge which was really cute the ironing board material, I got this at Joann's, like where the utility fabrics are. So they should have it at, at Joann's or I even, I've even found it at Walmart, um, at the Walmart where I shop, but um, Joann's should have it or um, maybe even um, like Hobby Lobby, if you have a Hobby Lobby. It's just, uh, it's in usually with the utility fabrics. So. And originally when I did these kind of designs, I actually did, um, oops, looks like I'm, there it's now it's gonna focus. Um, originally I did these with tearaway stabilizers. And the tearaway stabilizers, um, the tearaway stabilizers left kind of a, um, kind of a little, how do I describe it? Kind of a little fuzzy finger, you know, little pieces of paper sticking out. So I had done a couple of um, camera belt app, uh, projects, I think about that time. And they actually were um, done with the water cycle. And it was so cool because then you just kind of paint the edges off and it leaves a nice smooth edge on the, um, around the outside. And when you use the 
um, water soluble i don't take it out of the whole thing it kind of eventually dissolves as you're using it but what i'm going to show you what i do is i just kind of cut it so it's fairly close to the um, stitches on the edge and then i just take my finger and i run it under water and i just kind of paint the water soluble off the edge and then it kind of leaves a little bit of a stiff um, little edge all the way around the outside so it kind of keeps the the fabric from or the edges from looking frayed at all so that worked really well so i've been using the water soluble on these and it makes everything very neat on the edge so so it's a going this is going to be really cute this this little mickey head was a little smaller you can see my my original one was a little bit bigger but i think the little one's cute too i'm going to do the other one with uh, mini i think they're so I have one, and I think Minnie is facing the other direction. She's faced, she's over, she'll be over on the other side. So we'll do Minnie also. So it has to go, it takes a while to do a satin stitch all the way around. This is a pretty wide satin stitch. But it makes it fun to see how it's going to turn out. Looking pretty good. It looks like I did pretty well getting the edges covered, so I must have trimmed okay. Sometimes you have to kind of be careful how you trim. I have a little trouble sometimes with the batting on the back because sometimes I'll get a little not quite close enough. Looking pretty good though. And you can trim a little bit. I think I might have trimmed just a little bit on the back of this one. So it looked pretty good though. So we're getting close. Satin stitching does take a little while, so I'm sorry, but I figured that way you can kind of tell. It's gonna take about an hour to do it. And that way you can kind of judge how long it will actually take to sit down and make them. Working down on the bottom now, so it has to go up the other left side yet. Probably should have changed my needle. Can you hear that little clicking sound? I don't know if you can hear it very well. There's a little clicking sound, and that's actually the needle. I should have changed my needle. I think it, I don't think it's skipping stitches or anything, but I should have changed my needle out. So if you hear something funny on your machine, it, sometimes it's just a simple needle change that you need. And um, I often hear a click is what I'll hear when I'm, when I'm listening to my machine. And I change my needles quite often. So change your needles, you know, um, really makes the machine work better, sew better, sound better. So change your needles often. I do about, mm, about every, three or four bobbins usually. So sometimes more often, you know, if, if I hear something that doesn't sound right, then I change my needle. And this is a number 11 organ embroidery, large eye embroidery needle that I'm using. Even though I'm going through all these thicknesses, it works very well. Going up the side here, let's see. I think it's kind of started up around the corner at the top, so we're on the last side. He's kind of looking a little poofy now. What speed? Um, I usually use, my speed is usually around 800. Um, if you don't like to sew that fast, 600 is good, but I usually sew around 800. Um, some of the older machines, depending on the machine you have, some machines um, have like 
1,650, and this machine will allow me to go 100 stitches increments. So like I went from 1,000 down to 800 on this one. Yeah, you can do that, Barb. I don't always do every project, um, but it depends. I kind of go by how many bobbins I use. So if you use three or four bo projects on or bobbins on that project, then yes, change your change your change your needle. I don't do every. It depends. You know, if I have a very small project that I use like two th or three thousand stitches, I don't change my needle after that. So I kind of go by the bobbins. All right. This is going to be so cute. I actually really like this little Mickey. I'm going to I'm going to do the mini then too so that I have a matching set. That'll be cute. And I I'll take pictures of them. I'll take some pictures of mini when I get her done and I'll put the two of them together so you can see them both. Just about done. We got about two or 300 stitches left. Looks like the edge is going to look real nice. But I know I had a little trouble. I had I spent some time working with this edging to try to get the edging the right width and then also in the right place so that it covered nicely, you know, for the whole, both sides of the fabric. So we had to do a little, I had to do quite a lot of experimenting to get that right. All right. It's just about done. All right, there we go. So take a look at it. Woohoo! All right, so we'll turn it over and we'll see how we did on the back. Oh my gosh, look, see, it's nice and neat on the back. That looks good too. We'll have a little, few little uh, threads to trim. Looks like I got, I missed a little spot down here on my batting. There's a little spot poking out, but we might be able to trim that. So then what I'll do is I'll take this out of the hoop now. Let me grab my scissors and then I'm just going to trim with my scissors about up to about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And just be careful, don't trim through your satin stitches. I'm just going to kind of trim kind of close here, about an eighth of an inch away, all the way around. Like this. Oops. And then what I'll do is I'll take this to the sink in the bathroom and I'll run some warm water and I'll just dip my finger into the water. Get this all trimmed out here. Like that. And then I'll just run some warm water in the sink and I'll just dip my finger in and I'll just paint this away. And so I'll just, just get rid of all that little extra piece and then it'll be nice and beautiful on the edges. So there's our little Mickey pad, isn't it cute? Then this is the side you'll iron on by sliding it under your hoop. And I use that little Nifty Notions, that cute little Nifty Notions iron that we have on the website on shieldsewingcenter.com. I use that because it nicely fits on here um, when I'm doing my applique. Isn't that cute? So there's our little Mickey Mickey uh, ironing pad. So I think I'll do mini to this afternoon too before I put everything away. So then I'll have my little matching set. I'll take a picture of those for you. All right. So we have completed our little project. It took just an hour to do it. Let me go ahead and change my camera so we can say goodbye. Give me a second here. And my mic so you can hear me. All right. So we're done. We got our little Mickey Mouse, our little Mickey pad done, our little ironing pad. Isn't that cute? And then you can just be creative with these. You can put designs on them. You can use really pretty fabrics on them. And But I wanted to give you a fun, free design to use. Sorry, my phone is ringing, so I'm going to turn it off here. It's one of those stupid spam calls. <laughs> They're the, they know I, every, nobody, everybody else knows I teach during this hour. So, <laughs> all right. So there's our little Mickey Mouse, our little ironing pad. And that is your freebie and fun sewing summer sewing project for today so and now next week on shields live we will be talking about the new product so tim's going to be going to brother school um i think he leave said he left on sunday night and then he's going to be gone leave 
uh, I think Monday morning is when they're going to see what the new stuff is and um, for brother. And so then we'll be talking about those new products. Since I'll have more information, we'll talk about the new products then next Thursday on Shields Live at two o'clock. So I'll see you next week for the new brother product. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye.